I'm a veterinarian, which is a very different field anyway for someone to be doing what I do. But when you look at emerging infectious diseases, 75% of them are zoonotic. So there's some animal or environmental component to them that's creating the disease in a population. So actually having that type of knowledge is very helpful in, in understanding how these people are getting sick and what type of pathogens could be making people sick. How did Zika come as a surprise? What made Zika catch us off guard? Well, I think what caught us off guard was how severe the infections were. When chikungunya first came in, in December of 2013, when they started identifying cases of chikungunya, that had never been seen before in the Western Hemisphere. Chikungunya is one of those where 90% of people are going to get sick, and they're going to be really, really sick and have very debilitating illness. Um, and knowing that it was going to be spread just like dengue, I figured it would spread like wildfire, which it did. When Zika started coming out as being reported in Brazil, my initial reaction was like, oh, well, at least it's Zika. <laughs> You know, because all the previous reports were like, you know, you get a mild febrile illness, maybe a rash, you know, and that's it. Like, to me, it seemed the least worrisome of the, of the diseases that could be transmitted. But then when they started getting the reports of microcephaly and just knowing how flaviviruses are, I became very concerned that, oh, maybe Zika is neuroinvasive as well. And then when the data started being more and more clear that there was a, a true link between them, it just completely changed everything that we knew about this virus. And the concern went from being, oh, this is going to be nothing, to, oh my gosh, we got to get a vaccine, we've got to do something. This is going to be really, really bad. So what makes Houston and this region vulnerable to these kinds of diseases? One, climate. You know, we're in a tropical setting. But I think also when you look at um, diseases and how they spread, you have to have a population. And Houston is, you know, now the fourth largest, probably about to become the third largest city in the United States. Um, that's very densely populated, and so you have a lot of people in contact with each other. And then when you look at Houston and what makes up the population of Houston, we're incredibly diverse. But with it, we have a lot of transportation back and forth to areas where these diseases are endemic. And when you think about, you know, someone coming easily on a two or three hour flight from Central America or the Caribbean, um, they potentially could have the infection and transmit onto our resident mosquitoes here. And when you have such a large population, that's very conducive to spread. When we go out, actually out to look for Aedes aegypti, we can guarantee that we're gonna find it in the poor communities. And a lot of it has to do with dump sites that are around them. The mosquito that spreads Zika, dengue, chikungunya are container breeders. So they find these tires, they find these you know, containers with just standing water. It's easy breeding ground for them. And when you have these areas that are impoverished, one, you have dense housing units, you have a lot of people living in a very small geographic area. Um, a lot of them don't have uh, screens on their windows or air conditioning. And then when you think about financially, that they just are not going to go out and buy cans of repellent because it's not cheap. And so it ends up being a big problem. These populations end up being at really high risk for, for getting these types of infections. And it's no longer something far away in the tropical region. Oh no, right. it's, it's all right here. The more we understand about what's going on in the environment around us, the better we can have the tools to prevent disease. We've been researching West Nile virus here in Houston, so West Nile is a really big problem in our community. We have citizens who collect dead birds and turn them into mosquito control. Um, citizens who will call and report standing water areas. Almost all of our studies that we do here somehow have a citizen component to it. We're looking at many different sources to better understand what is going on in, in the environment. I think it's always really important to communicate our science, not just in scientific journals where, you know, less than 1% of the population would pick it up and actually read the article, but really do more um, to communicate what we do and what we find to everyone so they can understand how to protect themselves, protect their family members. Um, you know, we learn about the diseases and how it infect, affects populations, but especially how people put themselves at risk for getting these diseases. Um, and so I feel like there's so much that can be done where we can turn it around to them and make a difference.